Let's get it started. 701, call the meeting order. Regular meeting of the Planning Commission for <coughs> August 21st. Hopefully everybody had a good summer, had a month off, so. Hey, it's still summer. Yeah, barely. <laughs> just got, just got snow again, ready to fly. Well, this feel a felt awful chilly the other day, didn't it? Yeah, it's it's hot. Hot. There's some color already. <clears throat> Golden rods, nice and ripe. Um, <clears throat> any changes to the agenda? I don't have any. I had a couple things in my notes, my report, but I don't have anything for the agenda. Um, hearing no changes, I'll consider the uh, agenda approved. Um, approval of minutes. We have uh, June 19th. And, um, has everybody had a chance to review those? Mm -hmm. okay. Any changes? None here, none that I can think of. Didn't have seen any. Hearing. Any discussion? Hearing none. Um, minutes are approved. June 19th. Thank you, Faith. Um, administrative officer. Report. Okay. Um, uh, BCRs. Um, <laughs> Wilkins, Frost Hill Road, a 26 by 12 garage barn addition. Um, Cavoto, uh, Hillville Road, a resubmission of the one that they submitted last year for um, re replacement of a mobile home, which they didn't complete within the year, so they've submitted a, a, a new BCR. Wow. Very good. Yes, very good. <laughs> it's uh, 1264 Hillville Road. Um, no. That might be. It's kind of up a driveway after that um, house with various interesting vehicles outside it. You might be. You might be Danny Oh, because that that house is coming any day now. It's a modular. Is that before the bridge? Oh, that must be it. Then. Or the the the. Uh, the, the beaver dam? Yeah. That's right off on the right up the... Yeah. yeah. It's right next door to the Clark farm. Yeah, it works on VWs, I think. I think he, what, the guy there works on the VWs or something. Well, anyway. Okay, we right. We that offline. <laughs> um, and uh, another one that I thought was straightforward, but uh, Commissioner Sue... Somebody Sewitt had has, a question. Uh, asked me a question. Uh, this was Murphy, Fowlerbrook Road, uh, construction of a pickleball court. Um, when oh, I sorry, what road? Fowlerbrook Fowler Road. Okay. Uh, when I receive these things, I do just make a quick check um, of flood hazard areas, river corridors, etc. And I assumed that a pickleball court would be built on the field that is mowed. But Jim assures me that in fact it's being built in the middle of the forest, in the river corridor. Maybe. So maybe something I just learned this evening. So perhaps a uh, discussion with the Murphys is in order. That's all the rage, that pickleball. I don't it know is. exactly what it is. Hey, but it it's, does, it's tennis with a plastic ball out of plastic. Is that well, it's a smaller yeah. court. Yeah. Yeah. People are going crazy. Well, this, this one is what, 36 by 75, the building? Oh, it's um, an indoor one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Is it? Fancy. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Does that mean it's a commercial? Uh, no. No. It's, no. It's, it's just resident. Not, not to my it's knowledge. We'll just do like four 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 right? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I didn't are, realize it was an indoor. Right. I assumed it was just a court. Okay. I will contact. Uh, yeah, because I'm see, I'm looking at a foundation up there when I go by. Okay. Because when I go by, I go. So it's just as just you want the big culvert, you look up the hill and you can see the foundation. Yes. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, a couple of other pieces. So it's in River Corridor, not Flood Hazard, right? Uh, yes, yeah. apparently. I have to, I have to clarify. I, I had to ask the question. Um, 
other information that I've received, uh, there is a current, apparently uh, heavy cutting uh, logging uh, on the Hawkins property, which has been approved by the state. Um, we've also received mm. a copy of a wastewater uh, permit for replacement of a failed wastewater system on um, Belmont Road. Uh, I Where have, is that one? Where on Belmont Road? Um, it's 2318 Belmont Road. It's um, one of the properties it's just... Uh, That's the village. Yeah, but it's it's one of the ones not that not on the main road. It's one of those ones up in the back. There are several properties that just have a, an access road off Belmont Road. Like Burns. Uh, what's the name? Yes, Burns. Twenty three eighteen. Yeah, Burns. That's the one out in the field, I think. Yeah, it's not so. The one that really doesn't fit the profile yeah. of. It's oh, the one that will fly down. The fly down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What is that? What was that for? Hmm? The house. Have you ever seen the yeah. television show The Flying Nun, where she, um, uh, or no. Nellie, it was a, the she was a nun with a hat like this and oh. things out, and the wind picked her up and flew her around. Sally Field. And, Sally Field. Okay. And if you look at that house, it's a Lindell house. The guy out of Colorado, and the guy oh. always wanted a Lindell home, so it's got this peak in the middle and two wings on yeah. either side. Okay. Uh, okay, so weird. The replacement of their septic. Uh, I have now also received a copy of the approved uh, Act 250 permit for uh, MPH Holdings on Station Road, the 6,000. Oh, Master Palmer? Yeah. yeah. That is all approved now with many, many um, conditions which I only just saw this, I haven't had a chance to review, but there are many conditions, but it has Yeah, they never seem to answer our question. <sighs> they took it into account, I guess. There was some correspondence that said that it was, uh, um, that the wastewater system was designed so that the field, I don't know, I, I remember them, Suggesting that this is a super duper system and so no one should be worried. That was the gist of it. Right. One of the our systems. question was Andy's question that I forwarded them was that uh, they talked about having setbacks from the river, but yet they designed one of the wastewater, the wastewater well, field. Well, the dispersal field. The dispersal field is within, within that buffer. So it's like, what's the point of the buffer then? Right. So I guess maybe for surface water. But Anyway, well, they've since um, asked for an amendment to the permit just to clarify the description of the project, so it's not a material change. But uh, I don't know why they think that's necessary, but uh, they're just going to have to record the permit twice, I guess. Uh, if there are a convenient way to compare the permit with the draft that we saw, I might try to do that just to see how it's different from You mean what the request they to change? No, I mean this is the this is the per this is the permit, right? The yeah. the, and we saw a draft of it or the proposed permit. <coughs> yeah. So I'm just curious whether there's any changes so from the draft. I don't I don't know. I didn't compare like that. Well, yeah. one thing I will point out that I noticed is that it's paragraph thirty maybe thirty and thirty one that they um, they one of the conditions of the permit is that they use uh, dark sky approved lighting. So that's. That's Interesting that because I don't know if that came out of our town plan or just from the Act 250 zone. Um, I think that was list. actually as a result of a uh, request by a uh, neighboring property. Well, it could have been yeah. that too. Yeah, there was a letter. One of the neighboring neighbor. properties was making a request about yeah. the lighting, yeah. night lighting. Yeah, I mean, our yeah. town plan says essentially the same thing too, so I think that's good. Um, Yeah, there was a comment where they said they would comply and the lighting would only go on, you know, if they had to come in in an emergency, otherwise it would go off. At night. And yeah, yeah. yeah there was a response. Um, that, uh, or maybe a bear or something. And I think we're still on hold with uh, Garrow's Act 250. Uh, yes, it is. Um, the request of more information, I believe. Yeah, the 
the application for amendment is considered incomplete at the moment. Okay. And I haven't heard anything else. On no. Have we heard anything further on the coal subdivision? No. Do they but seem eager home. to go f go forward and they just needed to yeah. upgrade their upgrade paper. their plat. Right. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Cole has been away uh, working in Alaska, so I, I oh, don't okay. know whether it's been possible for him to pursue it. Um, other matters, as a follow-up to our last uh, meeting, I, I had noted then that I'd contacted the owners of Birch Run, the, the new town road, Birch Run, former Unterman property. Uh, I received confirmation from the owner, Spencer Orcus, that his plan is to build a single family residence. Um, mm -hmm. He is fully aware of the town rules and bylaws. Um, he's currently doing the, I mean, the road has been installed. He is doing the work to um, get uh, septic design so that um, a wastewater permit can be can be um, uh, issued, and he is currently doing some land clearing. I did go up there yesterday to check because I had heard that some people were concerned that he'd actually started work on construction, but nothing has happened apart from the road construction and the uh, clearing. There is. Uh, so we don't currently have a uh, BCR from them. No, he uh, explained that based on his understanding of the rules, which was correct, he would not need to apply to um, submit a BCR until he starts work, which on the construction, which is not expected to happen until next year. Um, I understand from Steve Flanders, who is doing the clearing work, that um, wetlands will be coming to have a look. Um, Green Mountain Power are uh, now in the process of uh, installing or making the next steps in terms of uh, what's required to approve installing the power lines. Um, and as was discussed, I think, at our last meeting, the length of the road whilst it would trigger Act 250 in 2026, it doesn't at the moment. So with a construction of only one house... Now, do we know if that power line is going underground or aerial? I have no idea. Okay. I'm just curious. Uh, <coughs> I'm just um, a little surprised if it's... If, I mean, isn't the ownership of the land in an LLC? Yes. Uh, and I understand that um, the principal of this LLC, Spencer Orcus, is a is a land developer right. from Connecticut, right? Uh, New York. New York. He actually lives in the town where I used to live. Yeah. Because the rumor goes that there's going to be six houses up there. I yes. say the rumor. Right. Well. He, I have it in writing from him. Okay. But his plan is... To build the first one. How big is the property? It's 180-ish acres, I think. So it's big, it's big enough to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe his plan is just to uh, subdivide every few years and... Well, think about this. 100 acres, you could build 10 houses on and not subdivide. And nobody will bother you. Mm -hmm. Just because you're going to build a house doesn't mean you have to subdivide it. I know, but I wouldn't buy a house on um, property shared by other people. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, you're right. You don't have to, but, but, <laughs> but it comes to some HOA. Sort of like uh, yeah, well, that's some of the property at Minnow. Yeah. There's a few, like three or four houses there is a rule or three or four I mean, groups that. Yeah. Yeah. And bought a property and built. Well, I would have. Uh, yes, I thought so. Yeah. Well, well, we have a condominium yeah. association. Right. Well, as yeah. of the 
the 8th of July, he says, my plans are to build one single family home at the top of the hill. That's so that's where um, Ronnie had had the clearing done, right at the top of his old woods road there. I, I it's about I wouldn't have 20 thought. feet from the wildlife management area. Is that is that where the location is? Um, well, it's a bit difficult to tell. I mean, it's high enough up so that you can... Is there a stone? You went to it? Yeah. Is there I, a stone wall to the west, northwest of the site? Um, not, I didn't see one. Yeah. Did you take a GPS location of it? I didn't. I mean, he, he may have gone up to the section where it uh, abuts with um, the wine trial property. Yeah, there's, there's, the, it's Palu, wine trial, and the WMA are all kind of doing together there. But anyway, it's um, just under the gun for the Act 250, but that would certainly trigger it. And we'll get into it in a minute here, but there's a, a whole revamping of Act 250 that, that would come into play. Apparently, it's something that we I need to get more familiar with what's coming, but um, the regional plan, uh, you know, despite all the work that we did on the town plan, the regional plan is in the new rules what has the most effect. And uh, the regional plan is in the process of being changed and um, revised right now. So it's something that um, I believe the regional planning commission is going to be engaging with us on. But that's the kind of thing that it would almost certainly not be allowed to come next year or in two years' time. Well, the road would in itself would trigger up 250. Yeah, in the proximity to a wildlife management area. I mean, it's like one thing if you built, you know, even several homes down closer to the road, but at 2,100 feet and adjacent, you know, within spitting distance of a wildlife management area, it's like exactly what the state doesn't want. Um, you know, we need more homes, we just not, don't want them in the wrong places. But that's the classic, you know, out-of-stater mansion property that, like, doesn't help affordability, doesn't help with how the housing crisis, doesn't help bring more young people into the state, doesn't help with anything. It only takes away from hunting space and recreation space and all those things. So it's a tricky one. But we have no rules whatsoever to stop it or even have any say in it at the time, at the moment, so. Um, can I move on? Oh, yeah. Um, so I had also, um, at the last meeting, noted um, the BCR from Marvin Patch for uh, construction, <laughs> reconstruction on the um, original foundation of uh, a house, again, in the flood hazard area, river corridor. Which recently burned, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, I was at that. Um, the, after some toing and froing with the, um, with Carl Medash, the um, flood, floodplain manager, um, Mr. Patch did agree that he does indeed need to complete a um, okay. flood <laughs> management, uh, flood hazard area permit request. Um, but given, given the nature of where he's constructing, um, there are two options and he has decided, I just received yesterday a, um, an indication that he's trying to get the LOMA process approved, which is the letter of map adjustment, which is that uh, the FEMA maps get adjusted based on a survey which is being done currently. Um, I do need to clarify with Carl what the process is because it seems that we are asking, we are being asked to initiate, or I am being asked to initiate, but I'm not sure that that's the way it should be done. So, just Carl could come do a site visit first. Yeah, I think um, he, he'd be better off if he moved that foundation down towards 103. Uh, say a hundred feet, fifty or hundred feet. 
he would have been better off not destroying, not not removing the original building in many ways as well. But well, that, that the original building was getting ready to fall down around their ears. So I understand. Yeah. It, it wasn't any what you'd call a repairable building. Right. And in the process thereof, they lit a match to it. Uh. Which brought in uh, the gentleman from Wallingford <coughs> to take a look at it and because he was burning things that were <coughs> a little bit uh, out of line. Okay. Paint, well, that, insulation, so, and so well, on. Is it allegedly he lit a match or was that the finding of the fire inspector? No, he lit the match. Okay, but do we have um, the state state fire inspectors came and did investigation? No, the guy from Wallingford came up. Because yeah, they fire marshal, fire marshal. The guy that lives down next to this boy is a fire marshal, I'm quite certain. Yeah. And they, uh, he was, you know, he was using the excavator and he was feeding the fire. Yeah. yeah. Well. Oh yeah. In okay. any case, it is. Well, I can't remember the term. It's a substantial change. Well, it becomes a substantial <laughs> improvement because he's building a completely new structure right, on the foundation. I mean, yeah. Hey, anything would be better than what was there. That yeah. I, yeah. But, uh, so the process okay. of um, arranging the permits has started and I'll work with Kyle Medash on, on ensuring that that process is completed correctly. Um, the other issue regarding flood hazard area construction um, uh, John notified me that um, the property at 1199 Route 103, uh, McClellan's, um, where they had built a garage almost two years ago now within the flood hazard area, they were also um, doing bank stabilisation work, which I uh, again contacted Kyle Medash regarding, and it turns out that they had a permit for this. A stream alteration general permit had been issued last year, and was recently extended for them to complete the work. We had not been informed of this at all, and apparently there is no database of these kind of permits. But I did contact Mr. McClellan, and he came in um, and confirmed to him that even though he has the state permit, he does also have to get a town permit. The, these two processes have to happen. And it also allowed me to raise the question of the garage that had been constructed without a flood hazard area permit. We are in a slightly interesting position because when the garage was constructed, whilst he did need a permit, it was under the previous regulations of the town, which are very vague and require information which or suggest that landowners re rely on information which is not available from FEMA and the state in terms of base flood elevations and so on and so forth. So I am trying to work again with Kyle on how we deal with the garage. But at the time, at the time that he built the garage, he needed a permit from the town. It was just under different regulations than it exists now. Yes. Is that right? Yes. But maybe. So it's very possible that the new regulations actually did apply. So when I talked to Kyle at that time, we knew that we, the, the new regulations were sort of in flight. Mm -hmm. And he, there is a rule that the new regulations do apply to even um, some projects. And I have to go back and look at his email about this. Um, there's, a, there's an overlap. And I don't know exactly how it works. I'll have to remind myself. Um, if, if you could forward me the email that Kyle sent you back then, that would be yeah, very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure it. I think Kyle has forgotten the conversation that you had. Yeah, because we had a really long lapse there. Yeah. But, but the fact is that he built a garage without a permit from the town. Correct. Yes. Because even because before that, he had been doing fill um, work, in, probably in preparation. And I saw you know, the material being dropped off in the excavator and back at the time. And I stopped by and said, you know, just so you know, yes. this is in the flood hazard area and you need a permit. And, he, you know, because he had done all kinds of clearing and, you know, in his mind, cleaning up the yard. 
But uh, is this the the White House that's right there on the? It's like right on the bank. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Big excavator sitting right there in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Like I, I saw it. Yeah. Or something. yeah. <laughs> which was used last week to install these. Reprap. Yeah, he had been he been hauling them. <coughs> <coughs> Pebbles in with a one-ton dump truck. <coughs> no. Yeah. What's left of it? <laughs> one at a time. Yep. Yes. You imagine really accidentally dropping <laughs> one. Squish. <laughs> <coughs> oh, good man, girl. I've well, I've loaded those kind of things before. I don't well, you put maybe a whole bunch of cribbing to catch it or something. No. Just what you you take a half a bucket of dirt and put it in there, oh, and then you take a rock here. So. But yeah, he was putting in, he was sent on uh, one time. Okay, I, I mean, at, at least now, um, because I had asked Carl about this, the garage, more than a year ago, and finally have managed to get some resolution from him. So yeah. I, uh, now I've also started a conversation with Mr. McClellan, well, that, so we can... We the the house is kind of between the river and the garage. Yes, the house was in it's a mobile home, I think, installed in no, 1997. No, well, the one that's there now is a modular. Uh, I was trying to find information. It's not a foundation. I it is. I, <coughs> thought it was I don't a, think it's a mobile. Oh. No, it's not a mobile. That I can tell you. But was it when was that constructed then? Oh God, that was that was put in ten ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Because the only information I have was a nineteen ninety seven mobile home. Oh God, that from the listers, from the BCRs. And oh, that was, well, they may not have ever filed the BCR. Exactly, because the mobile home burned. Oh, okay, right. Well, <laughs> another <laughs> matchlet. No, well, and the funny part of that one was the guns were in the back bedroom in the mattress, between the mattress and the springs in the bed and never got hurt. Didn't even get scorched because we were able to stop it. That was back when Ron Blodgett was fire chief. Anyway, anyway level a four conversation final. has begun. Um, you can get the construction <coughs> probably from the listers. Maybe. Okay, I'll check. It'd be interesting to know if there was even a construction done back then. Uh, there was. There's no BCR recorded from. I'd be surprised if there was. That was like I say, that was a long time ago. Okay. But the uh, listers should have a description of what's there now, shouldn't they? Yes. Um, that is the end of my report. <laughs> now that we've rocked it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> thanks for just right, picking up right on the stuff I was mentioning earlier. Um, we we'll probably have to look into some of these Act 250 changes and how they affect us and what information we can get to state. Um, we'll put that on the agenda for a future meeting. Um, I already talked about the master plumber permit. Um, mm. I got some information I forwarded to you all yesterday, I believe, that um, there's a new state river corridor law. Oh, good. And um, one of the reasons for that is there weren't enough towns taking advantage of what we did um, and getting, <coughs> getting the increased um, ERAF through a river corridor. So uh, is there still increased ERAF or not? Yeah, okay. I think there is. Yes, I guess that would. Um, so it, the new state law doesn't take effect, I guess, for another three years. So we have our law in the books until then. It's not clear how much of ours remains after the state does theirs or whether we do both. I think it has to do with whether or not there are differences in the level of restrictions. So you can increase restrictions over the state, but you can't lessen them. Just 
pretty makes sense. Um, but there will be this sort of typical, what we deal with in other ways, a state level permitting and a town level permitting. Um, in the, in, you know, the, probably in a town like Mount Holly, it just simply means if it's a river corridor, there won't be much building. And that's, you know, kind of the way it probably should be. Um, you know, the storms are washing everything away in river corridors. And, you know, the places with towns where you have a whole town in there, yeah, there's not much you can do. You have to keep the town, but um, we just have to find other places to build. Um, so we'll kind of keep our eye on that. Maybe we can even get somebody from the Regional Planning Commission to come in here and tell us a little bit more about it. Um, I don't remember, was there something else? Oh, I had it on the agenda, actually. I'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. <coughs> Moving on to subdivisions, we're sort of standstill, I guess, with the Coles and uh, Robert Guerra. So we'll, we'll see what we hear on those. I guess the letter to Cassons has quieted him down. Haven't heard any more. Didn't get a response <laughs> whatsoever. And I think, you know, <laughs> the fact that they needed to do him it. down. Well, yeah, thank you, Andy, for your work on that. Um, I think it was pretty airtight, I don't know what you could say. So, um, you know, I haven't been to many select board meetings, and I think I would have heard about it if there were more excitement there, so thankfully <laughs> it has been quiet. Oh, it's been real quiet. Uh, Probably but on the subject. <coughs> at the uh, section of the videos where the, because he did, what was written there was like, uh, did you actually see what he's, you know? Yeah. That, it's not like you had to listen to the whole so, meeting, just right. listen to the So we'll leave it there. Yeah. Um, but on the subject of subdivision, I think the message that we should take from all this is pretty clear that we need to do some work on our rigs. Um, we're really just asking for trouble. They're so old and so out of date and poorly written that we're just, this is going to mean it happened with basically everybody. We, I mean, thankfully the Turco one went pretty smooth. But almost every other one we've had in the last couple of years has been really tricky. Um, you know, I don't need to remind you all which they were, that there was, there was some that were typical. Um, I think, you know, this is something that probably takes conservatively a couple of years to do. But I would suggest that maybe sometime, once the weather changes and you have fewer things to do. <laughs> that, Ooh, that, yeah. Well, the winter's tough too, but uh, I don't know. We don't mind being uh, inside as much when it's dark out, I think. Um, yeah, that's something we could pick up. I can start working on it, I think, come December. Okay, great. So, um, which, that isn't that far, which isn't that far off anymore. That it. early, huh? <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I did ask the Regional Planning Commission folks, the ones at Logan and, and Devon, if they knew of other you know, sort of good examples that we could, because that worked pretty well for the flood bylaw, is getting a model that we could adapt. It's right. a lot easier, something that's been sort of tested, yeah. battle tested, than starting from scratch. That can be difficult. The problem is we're one of very few towns in the state without zoning, and, and they're usually built right into zoning. So there are maybe a couple of ones to choose from across the state, and generally speaking, they're also old. They don't, but I don't think they have a new subdivision bylaw either. So it's a sort of funny one. Like people who are want to do new bylaws, what they often do is apply for a grant. What people will often do if they're looking to update their bylaws is apply for a planning grant and then just go right into zoning. So it's all a one stop shop. Um, that's pretty clearly not going to work here, even though they're, you know, for a developer, there are lots of advantages. Like, you know, the administrative officer can guide you through the whole thing. You know, I was talking to the Regional Planning Commission yesterday, as a matter of fact, and they're like, you know, it's so easy for some towns where, you know, a developer comes in and like, here's what you need to do. Because you know, that's the thing we often run into is somebody comes in and they're like, well, where do I even start? Well, okay, you got to do the state, you got to do the town, you got flood bylaws, you got to figure out subdivision, you know, the whole point of that 
some talents is that it's a lot easier to deal with zoning. That ain't gonna work here because it's like not only any one of us wants to put that gun in our mouth, but anyway, that it's hard to find good examples <coughs> for that reason. So we'll, I, mean, I think we'll start. We could identify towns without zoning. Yeah, they're just very few, and if much, in, even from that small set, very, uh, almost none that have updated bylaws at any time in the last you know, 10, 20 years. That's kind of the thing. Where this town similar to Mahal are sort of stuck in the past, and they want to keep the one that they have, or it's working just good enough. But ours is not working, and it's causing us lots of problems. In fact, you know, we just narrowly avoided what probably saw a lawsuit in the last you know thanks to the good letter we put together so so anyway that's something i think we um we can keep on our in our back of our mind in the next couple of months we'll probably maybe throw it on the agenda for a real discussion on it um maybe if we do discuss it we probably want to also discuss what the state's uh report or prior to doing it or once we get going in it what their regulations are for, for subdivision, you mean? Or? Yeah, yeah, well, what their river corridor rules are going to be, like when they're enacted, because we're going to probably think that we're going to work on subdivision regulations for two years. We probably got to keep in mind, like, they're going to have to get a state permit probably for that of some sort, where if they don't have to right now, kind of like the septic situation that we deal with with ours, like, you got to go get a permit from the state. We always have to tell people, and they're like, no, it says in here. Apologize. Well, we're not going to update our, I mean, unless we're forced to, we're not going to update our flood by the No, what I'm saying is, is that the, like, if they are required, we want to see what the state's going to require for permitting and stuff for river corridors. Because they're going to, to subdivision. Yeah, because they're going to have to, if they identify a building site, right, and it's like in river corridor, then you got to get a state permit or whatever. Yeah, so we'll, I mean, we'll do both. And yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll get the information on I have to say, I mean, I haven't given it a lot of thought, but my assumption is that a new subdivision regulation should tell applicants that they need to have all their state permits, whatever they may be, mm -hmm. uh, before they come to us. So that we're not then sending them back or sitting around waiting for them to get it. And that, that's what I was saying, like we need to see what the state's going to require of them if it is in a river corridor, right. kind of like the checklist you guys built for right. the river corridor application, like, is yeah. your house here, yes or no? And right. like, do you need to figure out if they need a permit or not? And I think they know that they need to do more work on the permit navigator to make that easier. Mm -hmm. Ideally, with the permit navigator is you plug in your address and it kind of tells you what you need to do. Right. That probably will never, or they don't have any plans from my understanding, to include local permitting in that. Even though that would be kind of nice, is that they could very easily have a database. Oh, that's in Mount Holly. Mount Holly has X. And the permit data. navigator does uh, doesn't have an option to well, say that you want to subdivide. Right, and I think they, they know that that's one of their things they need to improve. Yeah. Only if you're actually building something, which may be your plan when you're subdividing, but not necessarily. Exactly. Yeah, and that gets into a deeper conversation on if is there, yeah. So we'll leave it there, I think. Um, email. I'm trying to think if we had any email queries. Oh, I did get an email, um, which I sort of related to Faith. Um, some folks that are pretty unhappy with what's going on on Birch Run, even though there's not a lot of information, I think. You know, this happens very regularly. People just sort of assume that there is some sort of thing we do. <laughs> some control we some have. Some control that the town has over certain kinds of development, and for most of it, we don't. And uh, I think that's, you know, occasionally surprising to people. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, Faith will follow up with, with them on that. Mm -hmm. She'll get a couple of follow-up on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, All right, so I think that's it for correspondence, right? When, nothing... Before you go over to the Weston yeah. thing there, I just had one question pop into my mind, and Faith can answer it very quickly. Across the blinking light here, it would be about 50 Hortonville Road. Big driveway. 
going straight up. Fancy driveway goes goes straight up <laughs> on the left side. Straight up to the to when, the house when you when going you up go up Hortonville Road. Yeah. You've got you can the big house on the right, and house on the left. There's yeah. a big driveway right. Goes right up the hill right there. Do we have anything on that? It's uh, a steep thing. <clears throat> Cause there's, I there's, a crane, there's a crane coming in. I'm going to gas in the next couple of months to set a house up there. I wouldn't want to drive that thing in winter. Oh, that ain't, that ain't going to be the driveway. That's just to get the house in. Oh, okay. So I'm told. Really? Um, <laughs> when, when the excavator slide's coming out. So is yeah, that going to be the coal property that just sold? Nope. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's, well, it, it might be cold property, but I don't think it is. Oh, I saw the road going and I saw it was doing it. And just, just a curiosity. I... Because you're coming in off off the other guy's driveway initially. And they, you know, they asked about it and he said, hey, go ahead, go for it. But the original driveway is going to come in on the other side of the stone wall. They just made a whole wall. Yeah, so they could, right around where so the, they could go straight in where the maple uh, the maple house the the house for the syrup is right well please no. I'll, I'll um, check up because that's part. just up from it so okay. Okay. you and your easy questions so she'll look into it and get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's like I say it's right there yeah so it sounds like we don't have one for that but, um, it's not sounding familiar and okay. I don't have the updated list all right, right here, so. so we'll move on to um, proposed Weston Town Plan. They have a, I believe it's Monday, they have a planning commission hearing, which we are all familiar with. Um, we are invited to attend <laughs> and give comments if they wish. Did anyone happen to read it? I didn't I read it. I skimmed over I skimmed it very I skimmed briefly. It. Looked no, I was going to say very briefly. Yeah. It looked like they were just expanding the... Um, uh, well, they're changing some uh, definition of one of the, or categories of one of the residential areas, and then they were expanding some of the con conserved areas. That's what I took from it. Okay. So one thing I, I mean, that's, I don't know which, do you happen to know which ones they were expanding, the conserved areas? I, do, I can look at the summary again. Yeah, I'll look at it again. There were generally areas that were already adjacent to um, national forest yeah. or other conserved lands. Yeah. Um, so one thing I noticed is that um, you know, Weston has a real problem with uh, depicting our town line correctly. I don't know if that's a regional planning commission. I think their regional planning commission um, is a contractor that does their town plan for them. Some regional planning commissions do that. They act as a consultant almost. Mm. They're employed by the towns. Uh, ours doesn't do that. But uh, I think they're the ones that did the mapping. So I'd like to at least give some feedback on that. That um, it should probably at least correspond to ours better. Our town plan maps. Are they stealing some of our land? Well, there's an overlap. Okay. And so the, in, they, also, is. they also depict our town line with Ludlow in a way that we don't. Mm -hmm. So I think that discrepancy should be addressed. Um, they don't include the new uh, wildlife management area, Owasso's. Owasso's. Right. They do little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see them add that as state mm -hmm. land. Um, and the, you know that's also part of their future land use map and what they call a conserved. I can't remember what terminology they use, but similar to our conserved yeah. forestry. Um, I like to see that new state land be included in that designation because they can't do anything with it anyway. Right. Um, so I'm, I'd, I'd like to give them that feedback at, at least. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to attend, but I'd like to try um, in person immediately. Um, 
Does everyone agree with those? Does anyone have any additional things that we should relate? Yeah, it's probably, it's like you said, it's not a major reason. Yeah. Um, Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay, does anybody have a problem with, with those comments being delivered no, on our good. behalf? Not yet, anyway. <laughs> I haven't read that thing close enough. I just skimmed it real quick without looking at a lot of detail. Yeah, okay. Well, and I think getting the town line right is an important thing to do. It's nice to have the consistency there. Well, it's just, you know, to the extent that Ledlow has a different idea, it'll be helpful if Weston and Mount Holly at least are in Love line. Ledlow and Mount Holly generally agree. Was oh, that right? Yeah. Okay. At least with our the listers maps, with the town plan maps. Weston, if you look at the state you know, parcel databases, you can pull up the parcel viewer. Weston and Mount Holly have this, this yes. overlap, which is just a, kind of annoying. Yeah. Funny how that happens. We're right. Of course. Um, okay, so we can all deliver those, uh, hopefully be able to deliver those messages on Monday. And if, if anything occurs to you over the next few days, that you can send them along. I don't think we need like a resolution or what we're going to say or something. So there's going to be another level of hearing after the Planning Commission one. So. Now I just want to go back to the one thing we were talking about, the email on the new state flood zone. I tried getting into it and basically I got twisted because it was like, these are the state comments, this is an amendment oh, that didn't pass. Oh, you clicked on the wrong thing, open up your email. I, I ended up in the same place. I gave the, like, the minutes of the meeting, like how are the, how those steps, like the governor vetoed it. Uh, so I can open your email. Oh, yeah. I if said, you click on the wrong part of it. You just gotta look at the click on as it acted. Uh, all right, boy, so we can look at this yeah. afterwards. Yeah, just um, it still doesn't really explain it because what a lot of statute does is like, oh, this will be figured out by the committee that's no, designated to do this. Well, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like ANR's to deal with this. You know, and, and 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 we ANR talk about like good. you know the power of the legislature in uh, the state and all that, right? Go to the governor's website sometime and look at the number of committees that report to the, the governor. Holy moly. Commissions, boards, committees. There is like three pages of it. It's, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. And all of these people are supposedly volunteers. My goodness gracious. And keeping track of them. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, let's move on. Open meeting law changes. Um, you may know this better. But my understanding is there's a couple of new requirements, many of which are actually more for the select board. They have posted on their website now how you can make a, a complaint, some of the new rules. But what I, my understanding is we do have a couple things that we need to do. And one of them is post our videos, at least for 30 days or something yeah, like that. Yeah, So no, we do are, that. We, are we set up yeah, for that? Yeah, August 19th. Uh, my understanding was the the I think the issue is we have to say yeah. where they're posted because they are posted. Outside. Well, oh, I think it's got to be in a. I don't know. Do you know what this? Uh, can I involve you in this? Um, do you know what this like? What is the answers? I just okay. know that there is an open meeting law right. and that it requires that they're recorded. Right. I know here. nothing about the posting of where. Right, and I I think. Well, do you happen to know what the select board is doing? Are they posting their own videos on Yeah, it has website? to be posted within a couple of days. Five days, I think it is. Do we normally have our videos turned around in five days? I believe so. Okay, well, so we might, what you're saying is we might be able to get away with just linking to the published one. Yeah, yeah I mean, my yes. understanding is it's about making sure that people know where they are. Because they are well, and, get, and getting them. Uh, well, and, and oh, can right. access them. Right. But she's, so, make, she's making this distinction of who is warehousing them. Right. She's so yeah. we'll, suggesting we'll, they don't have. Yeah. You don't have to. Well, so what we need to check is that is it enough that we just post a link to the published meeting videos, but we will need to publish the links themselves. Um, 
Maybe you know, can maybe we just do it in the minutes? And that way it'll so you know our videos pretty much are permanent, right? I mean, do you guys like clear uh, them I, out? I believe permanent long? enough permanent enough yeah. for you know, like I, I think there's some stuff ten years ago that we're starting not to have server space for, but right, right. you know, I don't think that's gonna matter to you. You they, they will be there fairly permanently for your use. The minutes will be there for like ever. So the minutes have to be. The internet never yeah. dies. <laughs> well, yeah, it's one of the yeah. things. use something like archive.org or whatever for yeah. that. So I mean, maybe the minutes is a better way to include that. So we just put put the link in the minutes. Are the minutes published within a timely fashion? Well, that they're supposed to be. We yeah. we, we struggle yeah. with it, and that's on me as much as anybody. I'm just saying, if there's a time limit for the video, then that means the minutes would then have to be. Uh, well, they, they, the new law says that they they have to be. There you go. Yeah. You know, but the select board is not posting a link. What are they posting? Okay, they are basically giving details of how to contact them. They've reframed how they post upcoming meetings. They then have a lot of text saying, this is what we do. Um, public are invited to attend, make comments. If any of you believe that there's been a violation, this is what you have to do. But all they do then is say, select board meetings can also be viewed retrospectively at the recording links below. Although there are no... Oh, no, they are now adding the recordings and on Okimo Valley TV. So, yeah, retrospectively they've posted recordings of meetings. Yeah, I think it, if, if Okimo, I think the turnaround for Okimo Valley TV publication is probably as quick as we would be able to do, and it would certainly be a lot less labor to be linking to those rather than posting our own and keeping track of how many we have and all that jazz. So is anybody opposed to just putting a link, an actual clickable link URL in our minutes that point to the meeting videos for each? Wouldn't it be easier just to put it, I'm going to say on the drop down menu, where if you need to see any, have a link to well, Okemo Valley, and then they just put in the date they want to look at. I think you both would be fine. I think there is a way to do a. I mean, you there's can like put a it tag, minutes, but, but I think, yeah, I believe you can. I believe you can link to a category. Yeah, yeah. So that would be great if we could coordinate that and, and on the web page for meeting minutes, probably or meetings. Maybe we could even combine. You know, I'll leave it to you to decide whether you think having a separate agenda in minutes page is, is working out well. Um, but if you just want to have a meeting page, that's fine. Um, and on there, having a
get it, get the actual video. From a hard copy, so at oh, yeah. the end of that's the, easy. End you of just point your phone at it. You just click it. Yeah, at the end of each set of minutes. I to say maybe the beginning. A video yeah. of this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. yeah. And that way, you know, we're looking through them online a, a lot of the time. Um, they're clickable in the PDF. Okay. You know, and we like we said, we don't know how long they'll be retained there, but it's a. So I think it's easy to have everything encapsulated in that. Yes. All right. I think that's all we would need to change. I think that we've already followed most of the other things. We have hybrid meetings. Um, we publish every, you know. Do, do you know of any other changes that are, that are relevant to us? Yeah, I don't think there are. So, all right, cool. Unfinished business. I don't think we have any. Anybody? There's nothing at all. I have a lot of public comment. What's that? So we're going to have a lot of public comment. Oh, yeah, we'll be here for hours. Yeah, it's <laughs> no, Just out of anything. curiosity, um, which you probably can't answer at this point anyway, is the changes to the Act 250, would that require us to do any changes to our town plan? No. Okay. Not that not that I'm aware of. Well, it's a little early to figure that out, but I would just figure that ask. I don't think it's going to require any anyway. It's just moving, like John said earlier, more we, that regional was, planning commission. Yeah, we, you know, the, the regional planning commission folks were pretty, pretty sure what was going in um, when they reviewed ours, and you know they gave us a little bit, you know, there's, there was, I don't remember what it wasn't actually the Act 250 one, but it was like the S30. Or was that there were additional requirements mm -hmm. for town plans that was kind of uh, anticipated? Okay. Okay. Yeah. They were anticipating the new Act 250 stuff, and I think you know we had gotten all those in, so we got in at the sweet spot. Okay. So I think we should be fine. Now, the re like I said, the regional plan is a whole other kettle, and um, this next year we're going to be getting into that. I think. Um, you know how that can, sorry, just uh, I have a link to um, the Department of Housing and Community Development summary of the Act 250 changes, and I can send that. I can circulate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and great. then you can look at it. It's quite lengthy, but... And if I can't find it, I know who to call. And there's this like <laughs> tier system thing that I have no knowledge of, but there's a whole tiered review right. that I don't know anything about. Do uh, you know how the Regional Planning Commission will go about revising the Regional Plan? Well, our, our, I don't know, but I, I know they will involve us. And what I'm hoping is that the mapping that they do is really critical. And I'm hoping that they take our maps right. and use them for the town component. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I think that remains to be seen, but you know, we're we're very you know, the fact that they helped us significantly with our town plan says that they're probably on the same page. So yeah, we really do want our language and our maps to get into the regional plan. So we'll try to make that happen. Any other public comments? <laughs> Any public comments? All right. You are the public. <laughs> Upcoming meetings. We have a September regular meeting. Um, May the 18th. Eight o'clock on the nose, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>